it's going. Hi everyone, <laughs> I'm Sarah Mezqua, and I've enjoyed working with all of you guys this semester, especially on the Educational Giants projects. It's been really fun. So I'm excited to, to share with all of you my Educational Giant, who is Ella Flagg Young. So let's begin. Okay, Ella Flagg Young was born in Buffalo, New York to Theodore and Jane Reed Flagg in 1845. She didn't attend school until the age of 10 after teaching herself how to read and write. She came to Chicago with her family at the age of 13, and that's when she started high school. Only a few months after she started high school, she dropped out because she realized that she was too intellectually above everyone else. She wasn't challenged enough in a lot of areas. Ella was told by her mom and by teachers that she would never amount to anything in the educational realm of things, but she persevered on and decided to set herself up on her own curriculum for her own potential classroom. She found out that she had to qualify for some entrance exams, um, and the candidate must have to attend one year of Chicago Grammar School. In the meantime, she went to Brown Schools for the highest grade that they offered there for a few months and found it repetitive. So she passed all the classes and she left. Um, in her earlier life, her biggest influence was the Chicago schools nearby, namely Brown and Chicago High School. In the years to follow, all Chicago public schools would benefit from her exponentially as she had taught for 53 years in the educational system. In 1860, she took the teacher's examination and passed, but she was too young to be awarded the teacher's certificate. You had to be of a certain age. In dismay, however, the superintendent asked her if she would like to enter the normal school, is what it was called, in Chicago, which she ended up doing. Upon completion in 1862, she taught a first foster school. Following that, she became head assistant at Brown School for no more than two years. It was at that point in her life, this was the pinnacle, the breaking point, where she realized that she wanted to teach a classroom. She wanted to teach a school as well as students. She wanted to teach teachers and learn from each other. She married William Young in 1868. Fortunately, they had no children together, but that was okay considering she had multiple, multiple children throughout the education system. William died when he was 27 years old, which was very sad. Um, her parents and her brothers and sisters had already died at that age too, um, around that age too, so she had no close relatives. So procreating was not the biggest of her worries. She um, sorry. She began to teach part-time in 1895 with John Dewey at the University of Chicago. Her and John Dewey were very close as teachers and trainers together. He was a trainer of teachers. Dewey had fantastic things to say about Ella throughout the course of their teaching and professional career together. Um, a comment that I really loved that he said about her was he said... I hardly ever have seen anyone with such a habitual and keen sense of influence of one person associated with other mental habits, such as Miss Young. I owe chiefly to association with Miss Young and her depths of conviction uh, with all of herself, all of herself socially, intellectually, and mentally. So quite the kudos to Miss Young from Mr. Dewey there. They worked very well together. She received her PhD in 1900 and became a full-time professor after that. And she published three books, which was pretty cool. She published The Isolation in the School in 1900. She, po she published Ethics in the School in 1902 and Some Types of Modern Educational Theory in 1902 as well. So she was really on top of the ball there. Young became superintendent in 1897. She was professor of education at Chicago University, University of Chicago in 1899 and the principal of Chicago Normal School in 1905. And she was superintendent of a lot of schools in Chicago in 1909. 
until her resignation, which was 1915. During the time that she was principal, superintendent, all of the above, she improved the teacher training programs, moving forward the teaching production and including all recreational and physical training in the school system. She actually founded field trips for our younger kiddos out there, which was really great. She believed in a lot of hands-on education, teaching, etc. She started sexual education within the school and she started physical education. So without Ella Flagg Young, we wouldn't have any of those awkward sexual education classes. She believed that, um, that it was our duty to teach the generation to follow us. So 1910 to 1911, the membership of the National Education Association elected her as the first woman president of their group. Young also identified strongly with the women's suffrage movement towards the end of her life. She died at age 73 in 1918 from the flu. Sad. Um, Ella Flagg Young, in my mind, was the Mother Teresa of the educational system. She brought love and passion and motivation, self-driven motivation, which is really important, which is what all these educational giants bring to the table. And she brought a lot of love to the realm of education. She was a pioneer in many aspects, seeing as she was one of the first educators who believed that students are taught in all different ways, that not, one not two students learn the same way. She also, as mentioned before, was the first to cultivate sexual education and physical education within the school districts. I believe that Ella Flagg Young has impacted all of our lives today and fun fact there is a school called the Ella Flagg Young School in Chicago it's an all-girls school and if you look up their website they seem pretty stoked to be an all-girls school so I hope you enjoyed this presentation and I hope you guys have a great rest of your semester finish it out strong and I hope you learned a little bit about Ella Flagg Young okay bye guys